Giving you background on the Indiana Jones franchise seems redundant given how popular, iconic, and revered the adventure series is, so instead let's address the elephant in the room of this game that I despise. I'm playing this game with an expansion pack, an accessory for the Nintendo 64 that greatly expands the console's random access memory, allowing it to run games with higher resolution graphics and improved speed and performance. To my knowledge, there are two games on the console that are so demanding on the hardware that they're actually hard-coded not to run without an expansion pack those being Perfect Dark and Donkey Kong 64. Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine really should have been number three on that list, because I've heard that if you try to play this game without the expansion pack, this thing crashes like a Vista machine after cruising porn sites. The game is the port of a PC release that was hailed at its time for its detailed graphics and intricate environments, not so much for actual gameplay, and I guess someone at LucasArts just refused to cut anything for a much weaker system because the Nintendo 64 port is pretty much a one-to-one -one recreation that badly overtaxes the console. I've read that Factor 5 actually rigged the cartridge itself to act as expanded memory for the system, and it still barely works. So every glitch, every problem, every cheap death that you're gonna see in this video, this is me running the good version of the game. And if that's true, I weep for the PC original. The game takes place after the end of World War II, meaning that Indy has officially transitioned from fighting Nazis to fighting Communists. Before the story gets underway, you're dropped into a tutorial level for one of Indy's less glamorous digs. Although the prerequisite of a tutorial level is that it usually explains how to play, and this game doesn't explain dick. It doesn't explain how the inventory system throws everything into the pause menu, but actually using a lot of the items requires first mapping it to a quick access key in the corner. It doesn't explain how the whip can be used as a weapon, but doesn't seem to actually kill anything, so you have to use Indy's gun for all the combat because it has infinite ammo and never has to reload. And it doesn't explain the poison mechanic. The game is full of snakes, spiders, and scorpions that poison you so that you constantly lose health very quickly until you die. Luckily, you have antidotes to cure the poison. They're hidden in a sub-menu on the pause screen. Unluckily, you only get one poison kit for this first stage! Get bit twice, and you're dead! Oh sure, I eventually figured out that any healing item will also cure poison, like halfway through the game! Another thing the game doesn't explain is its wonky save system. You can save the game anytime you want from the pause menu, but when you die, you're also given just a regular continue option because the game is always dropping checkpoints. So why the hell would you ever need the manual save option if the game saves for you? Well, for one thing, using the continue option in this tutorial stage, respond to me already poisoned! Any ammo or healing items that you use up between the checkpoint dropping and you dying don't come back when you continue, and they also don't come back if you restart the level. You'll need a manual save if you don't want your items constantly being wasted in levels with combat. So save early, save often. Anyway, plot. Indy is called in by a friend in the CIA, Sophia Hapgood, who, if I'm not mistaken, was also in Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, to investigate the Russians digging up the Tower of Babel. Babel, if you didn't know, is a Bible thing where people tried to build a tower that could reach into heaven, so God invented the different languages of the world so the workers couldn't communicate, and the tower fell. It's also a crappy Yu-Gi-Oh card! But that's probably less relevant. The Russian villain Dr. Vlodnikov thinks the tower was actually torn down because it was housing some great power the Babylonians wanted to stay hidden, a theory that's backed up by some anachronistically advanced machinery from the dig site. Oh great, chronomalies now. Which, Crystal Skull, another crappy Yu-Gi-Oh card! Vlodnikov thinks the machine has the power of some ancient god Marduk and can travel to an alternate dimension, and when Indy digs up the machine, he finds that four parts are missing. So he has to travel the world looking for the burial sites of the parts of the infernal machine so that the bad guys can take them all from him and save themselves the work, because that's what always happens in this franchise! How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? The game could best be described as a puzzle platformer. You spawn in a tomb or archaeological site or whatnot, and you have to get to the exit by solving puzzles, tracking down key items, and doing lots of jumping over tricky terrain. Actually, the game could best be described as a where the hell do I go game where you wander aimlessly in circles while constantly falling to your death from the controls, but that's not really a genre. So yeah, the first and one of the biggest problems with the game is the controls. They are super clunky, and frankly, more than a little glitchy. 
When you first start playing the game, it seems like Indy either runs or walks completely at his own discretion, regardless of how far you push the control stick, so Indy will just casually stroll everywhere you go so that basic navigation takes forever. And somewhere around World 3, I finally started to realize how it works. Indy won't run if you try to move straight forward. Point the control stick directly ahead, he walks. Point the control stick to move in a circle, he runs. Indiana Jones literally cannot run in a straight line. And if trudging movement speed doesn't sound like a problem, it feeds into a really big problem. Indy has three different kinds of jumps. If he's standing still, he'll jump straight up with no maneuverability. If he's walking, he'll do a little bunny hop. And if he's running, he'll do a vault forward that would put Olympic long jumpers to shame. That covers a crap load of distance. Some whole levels of this game are built entirely out of jumping puzzles where you have to cross gaps spaced as friggin far apart or you can just barely reach them with Indy's running jump. So if Indy just decides that he doesn't feel like running, or if you tilt the stick wrong and Indy stops running a split second before you tell him to jump, or often you'll enter the right input and the game just won't launch the correct jump because it feels like it, which happens a lot, you fall and you die. Over and over and over and over again. This is a puzzle platformer built around jumping that seems to run on a random number generator. You will constantly miss jumps and die, or worse, have to do painful backtracking through absolutely no fault of your own. Either Indy won't do the right jump, or Indy will just float and slide off of his target for no apparent reason, or even if you make a jump, Indy sometimes just won't grab the ledge. It's a Russian nesting doll of glitches in the basic movement that will be a big throbbing pain in your ass the entire game and good friggin luck around the game's halfway point when you need to make whole series of jumps between platforms with no checkpoints in between and basically hope you can just do a dozen or so in a row with no bugs throwing you to your death. I got this game with tons of rental labels from a blockbuster and funnily enough two of the save files that were already on the cart when I got it threw in the towel at level 2 at the exact point you have your first major jumping puzzle and find out how abysmally coded this all is. That third save file, FYI, only made it to level 3 out of 16. So odds are that my playthrough is the first time this cartridge has seen 90% of the game. I wonder what compelled that guy to quit on level 3. Maybe it was because you need to jump to a tower to infiltrate a Russian base and get critical items, but you would never know that because Indy just slides right off the tower over and over until you just get lucky and he actually climbs the critical terrain. Or maybe they gave up on level 3 because of the rafting sections. About the entire second half of this stage is a series of water pathways where Indy uses an inflatable raft to row down rapids. Except the rafting controls are horrid and take several seconds to respond to any in puts to turn. If you touch a sharp rock, the raft starts losing air and you die, and you only get one raft repair kit for the level. Once that's gone, you're screwed. Actually, there is a hidden spot in the cabin where you can find unlimited refills of the raft repair kit. It's one of many times the interact prompt doesn't appear to let you know that something is there. Your only clue what this cabinet does is a muddy texture that if you squint really hard at it almost looks like pizzas are stacked inside it. And even with refills on the kits it doesn't matter because the physics are so abysmal that 9 times out of 10 that I hit a rock I just get completely stuck and die anyway. I really should just whip out my Game Shark, which has codes to just automatically insert any key MacGuffins into your inventory at any time, but if I did that, I would have missed this gem. This absolute beauty of terrible coding. See, to get the last magic candle, I need to climb up these pistons. And given that there's a bridge here, I figure I need to walk across this fallen piston to reach the others. Except trying to get Indy to jump onto the damn piston makes him sink into the ground and get stuck. Okay, maybe I need a running jump at the bridge to try and cross it. No, because Indy just gets stuck on some invisible cloud of bullshit that ensconces this object and he floats right off. You're actually supposed to jump to the intact piston to the right and climb around to a floor above you, so this bridge that's in easy reach is hard-coded to be unclimbable just to trick your stupid ass. And when I finally got the candle and went to clear the stage, the game crashed. Just beautiful. 
You want combat? Oh, the game has combat. Hold Z and B and hope all the enemies die before you do, because Indy barely moves while strafing, has no dodge, and good luck using any variety of cover. You know what's a much greater threat to our brave hero than armed Russians, poisonous snakes, and rabid wildlife? Chest high walls! You do get a variety of weapons to use in combat. Pistols, a machine gun, a long-range rifle, a shotgun, even a bazooka. I just don't get why the game gives you like four to five completely interchangeable pistols, all with their own unique ammo to clog up your inventory. I also don't get why there are two different sets of healing items. You have medical kits and medicine, and then you also have large and small herbs. Both sets of items have the exact same effect, so why have both of them? Unless Indy using medicinal herbs is meant to explain away the many graphical glitches. Dude, my arm looks funny, man. In the middle of levels, you can pick up treasures in the form of jewels, coins, idols, all of which give you cash that you can buy new inventory items in between stages. The enemies drop a crap load of ammunition for the combat that's so easy, so I tended to almost always stock up on medicine. And I was never, ever, ever in any remote danger of running out, mainly because I abused manual saves to rewind time around all the animals that poison you to suck out your healing items. Level 4, Indy finds a hidden mystical monastery, and this is where you start getting exposed to the other big problem with the game, the general dickishness of the level design. Paths that you need to take to advance further into the stage will often be hidden or obfuscated to where you just wander around levels aimlessly for hours, bashing your head against the wall trying to figure out what you missed. The sanctuary level opens by you needing to reactivate a bunch of ancient machinery, which begins with you needing to head to the catacombs, and I must have wandered around this room for 10 minutes trying to figure out how the hell you get back out again, until eventually, by sheer luck, I finally saw it. There's a swing point for your whip above the exact place I'd climbed to three different times. The game just did nothing whatsoever to make it visible or point it out. You have no control over the camera past just recentering it behind you or entering a first person view while standing still, which is extremely clunky. And there's a lot of stuff over your head that you just can't see, including multiple critical grapple points for the whip. The game will only pan the camera over to show you said swing points if you actually have the whip equipped, which you never will because the whip is friggin' useless in combat. Then there's a room you just have to somehow magically divine that you have to jump into a hole in the ceiling that there's no way in hell that you saw! You get a plant that you're told needs sunlight, which you'd think means take it outside, but you're just supposed to know that it means to put it back where you found it, and then jump on a platform that you didn't know is a pressure pad, which you didn't know opens a window to let in sunlight, and the absolute pisser comes near the end when you get a key, and you have absolutely no idea where it goes. The key goes in that gold thingy on the other side of this room, which you can only reach by a series of complex jumps, which don't even look like they can be accessed, unless you somehow by sheer magic spot that there's a ledge perfectly camouflaged into the wall at the top of the room that you can climb. Maybe my patience was just shot already and I reached for the walkthroughs too quickly, but I get infuriated by games like this that have zero respect for the player's time, that just expect you to have the commitment, investment, and lack of anything better to do than to wander around this damn level for days or weeks trying to spot the one clue that'll let you continue. I'm not some divine arbiter of video game design, but to me, guess where I hid the thing is not a puzzle! Though it is kind of funny when you get to the end of the stage and this ancient sage woman gets buffed from a magic flower and casually hucks barriers out of your way. Yeah, this game gets weird. You'll see. Speaking of weird, you fight a giant ice frog monster. Because Indiana Jones! Nothing you do hurts it. You have to cross a series of platforms to reach the top of the stage, pretty much just hoping you get lucky and that all of the jumps work, because two bridges that you need to cross to reach these jumps collapse on you and don't come back. You only get one shot at this without having to reload a save. Why? 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 Why would you do that other than just to be an asshole? 
Indy gets the first part of the Infernal Machine, and each part has a magic power, this first one letting you shatter and smash weakened rock walls. Giving Indy magic powers is a really cool addition, but spoiler warning, the powers they came up with are pretty lame. But first, Indy used Rock Smash! It's super effective! Next, Indy is sent to a beach where you need to open the entrance to the next temple. It's actually a kinda nice level of straightforward exploration, lovely scenery, and a few decent puzzles. I'd ask how the hell you guessed that a broken plane propeller blade prize open stone doors, but whatever, I can dig it. What I cannot dig is colossal frame rate drops and a recurring glitch that completely disables your inventory because the game didn't process you exiting the water correctly. Seriously, that happened non-stop to me during this level. Funnily enough, your hint that the glitch has gone off is that Indy will forget to put his hat back on. It's like it's fused into his head and contains part of his brain or something. Level 6, one batshit puzzle jumping room, two or three keys hidden off in remote corners where you'll never find them, crop loads of poisonous spiders and scorpions that suck out your healing items, and a whole lot of glitchy jumping over insta-kill lava. Oh, and there's a lot of armed commies in this level. It turns out that if a single pixel of an enemy's body is behind cover, if so much as a pinky toe is blocked off, their entire body is apparently considered bulletproof. Cover systems have come a long way in the past two decades. And then level 7 has you doing more entire stretches of jumping over insta-kill lava, complete with the game glitching and removing frames about every friggin' jump, because why not add insult to injury at this point? Oh, and you need four or five perfect and precise jumps to go off in a row at a time on small disappearing platforms. This one room took me half an hour to cross, and then you have to cross it three times. Look, if I fall and die because I misjudged the distance or wasn't lined up correctly, I can handle that. But when the wrong jump keeps arbitrarily going off by accident, or Indy keeps refusing to make jumps that he made perfectly fine 30 seconds ago, I'm gonna call bullshit. Because even being very, very well practiced at the jumping by this point, the random and glitchy nature of the platforming still led to constant cheap deaths. Oh, and you fight living rock monsters that explode and damage you when killed, and at the end there's a lava monster boss that you get past by dying a whole lot more to the platforming until you get an infernal machine part that turns you invisible so you can sneak past it. At least this fighter is easier to figure out than the last one was. By now, I was fully exhausted with this whole game. The non-stop platforming puzzle headaches persistently being sabotaged by horrid controls and rampant bugs, and I was in desperate need of a break. And I was in luck because level 8 is a driving stage in a jeep! All the Indiana Jones movies have a really spectacular car chase or a vehicular action sequence. I bet you're expecting a level racing down commies, getting into running gun battles with tons of thrills, heart pounding non stop action! Well, you can eat shit. This entire Jeep level is just a series of jumps over insta-kill pits. Jumps where you're given a ramp that you have to hit just exactly right at as high a speed as you can manage with meticulous setup or you fall and die. I've played Carmageddon 64 and Ride to Hell Retribution, and I'm still struggling to think of how you could have missed the point of a driving stage any worse. The cream de la crap, though, is this cave where you need to carefully drive your jeep down a slanted wall to climb down a spiral that Indy otherwise can't scale. But the turning is too stiff and the physics are too borked, so no matter what I did, I died anyway. The only reason I got past without cheating is the game took pity on me, and it counted me crashing to a fiery death on top of one of the checkpoints as having crossed said checkpoint so I could skip this section altogether. There are also some Russians to fight, but the controls on the Jeep are way too clunky to run over them, so you pretty much have to get out of the car to fight them, and also to properly set up one of the jumps because this ramp cannot be used as a ramp. Tell... Tails... To eat me. Next, Indy heads to Mexico, because the Russians are digging around some old pyramid, so you go to... Teotihuacan... 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 The game gets a little nicer at this point, as levels 9 and 10 you're exploring temples full of puzzles that ease off on the platforming. And I mean actual puzzles, not I hid your way forward behind three walls in the corner because I hate you puzzles. And honestly, when the game focuses on legit puzzle solving, it's not all that bad and can be fairly stimulating. 
Although Indy's arch nemesis, the chest high wall, returns in level 10. And the killer? This jump right here is on a stretch that's timed. You have to press a switch, climb a wall Indy won't climb, make a jump Indy won't make, and jump to a platform that Indy just sporadically bounces right off of under a time limit. And next in glitchy platforming theater, feast your eyes! Indiana Jones trying to climb stairs! Unfortunately for Indy, stair lifts had not been invented yet. I know Harrison Ford's getting old, but this still seems like a lame climax for Indy 5. This is a lot of work to play with a slinky. I always wondered why Stairway to Heaven was so dang long. These stairs were built for such long legs, did this culture worship Bayonetta? Yeah, I guess we figured out why the short, fat villain is letting Indy do all the work. One would think that of all the bugs that QA reported, somebody would have put, Ditch the stairs! Indy's just glad YouTube isn't around yet or this footage of him would go viral. Indy is now kicking himself for never using the Stairmaster he got last Christmas. This new obstacle in American Ninja Warrior is not very good. Upon his return, Indy personally demolished all his university staircases and ordered them replaced with escalators. I want to find the guy who invented the stairs and push him down these stairs just to show him how stupid stairs are. And just like that, Infernal Machine is a better Castlevania game than Castlevania 64. God help me, I actually miss Short Round, he could give me a boost. For all the talk of how technically advanced this game was, Mario 64's staircase technology was miles ahead of them. God, I hope this is the right pyramid. I'm starting to see why Factor 5 was banned from making anything but Rogue Squadron after this. I would take a lightsaber to the chest for this day to just end. The moon logic kind of returns with a vengeance in the boss fight with... Well, it's obviously supposed to be Quetzalcoatl, but they never refer to him by name for some reason. You're just dropped into an empty room. You open a door and work a pressure pad that seems to do nothing, then you run to the door the boss came from to get an infernal machine part. This one says you can fly, but it seems to do nothing because it's on you to figure out that it only works if you stand on some really friggin' specific floor tiles. And then you stand on tiles that sink downward that, if you pay close attention, drive up spikes to hurt the boss. Like, you're clearly gonna figure this all out right away, and not after dying about a hundred times. And if you thought that Indy being stymied by stairs was embarrassing, he falls for the age-old rope trap and is captured by the Russians. So next level you need to escape a boat. I think level 11 is supposed to be a stealth section where you creep past all the Russian guards, but you get all your weapons back pretty quickly, and then you can just mow through them like Jason Voorhees. Especially since this ship looks a hell of a lot like the ship from Jason Takes Manhattan. Hell, if it were a stealth level, there probably wouldn't be a recurring glitch where the invisibility item keeps vanishing from my inventory. Man, that stealth power is good. Jokes aside, I kind of like this ship level. It's straightforward, it's kind of fun exploring, and it's short. The bulk of the game's levels are abusively long, to where most of the long plays I find take 45 minutes to an hour to complete a piece. The boat level is a nice respite before we go to the pyramid, which is a dickish scavenger hunt on an utterly massive open map that takes forever to tediously search and is basically no signposting to speak of, where you have to pretty much fully explore four different pyramids, constantly backtracking over each room about a dozen times because crap loads of critical paths are hidden out of sight. There's a weird part where as soon as you go outside from the pyramids, a bunch of Russians are supposed to spawn in a cutscene, but I triggered this cutscene three times. It just shows empty desert for a few seconds. Whatever, let's go kick some Russian ass and the game crashed again. This is also the point where you start running into enemies that carry grenades, which are almost impossible to see coming or avoid, and they kill you out of nowhere pretty much instantly. But luckily, I managed to defeat the grenade douche in this level with a cunning strategy, triggering an unrelated cutscene so that he blows himself up in the background while I'm frozen motionless. Brilliant! Now here's the interesting thing. Level 13 is technically optional. It's a minecart stage where the cart moves too quickly for the game's graphics and lighting engines to keep up, so if you're playing without an expansion pack, the game just straight up skips this stage. Although considering that I saw near constant massive graphical glitches in this stage even with the expansion pack, they probably should have just sucked it up and cut the level altogether. Or cut the speed of the cart, or done anything to accommodate the game running on weaker hardware. And keeping up with the weird naming conventions, this is obviously supposed to be King Solomon's Mines, but they keep calling him King Saul. Just why? 
I am really tempted to just pluck out my expansion pack and cut to the next level, because if you're expecting a Donkey Kong Country or a Temple of Doom high action exciting minecart chase, you're SOL. I'm not entirely sure what the goal of this level is, but you wander around different rooms getting items and then the Russians show up just wandering in aimless circles, so you send them into a pit, but that doesn't end the level. You need to track down three jewels that open the exit, and all the minecart does is transport you between the different sets of ruins that you need to check. A big reason I got stuck, though, is that it turns out you can drive the cart in reverse, and if you do it in one really specific spot, this works nowhere else, it takes you to a critical plot MacGuffin that's required to beat the stage. Am I crazy, or even having gotten this far into the game, does this not ring of how the hell do you figure that out? Level 14's another tomb. Got stuck until I looked up that you can push this statue. Whip point that you're given no clues there. Fighting hovering robots and automated tanks. Wait, what?! We got Ancient Gears in on this now? Well, it does give Indy a chance. The Ancient Gear monsters are garbage. There's a weird puzzle here where Vladnikov grabs a gear that you need to repair an elevator and he runs away whenever you get close. My first thought since this was the first time you meet him in gameplay was to shoot the main villain in the head, but for whatever reason that didn't work. My second thought was to use my trusty invisibility power to just sneak up on him and take the gear and also stab him in the back, but that didn't work either because you need to push three blocks into really specific places to cut off Vladnikov's running path and trap him, which relies on you just just knowing that Vladnikov's an idiot who won't just run around the path that you blocked off. Also, his AI can shard itself and get stuck in walls to where the puzzle doesn't work in the first place. Speaking of bugs, Indy got stuck in the terrain twice, the second of which forced me to reset because I couldn't pause the game. A cutscene had the floor disappear to where Indy looks like he's flying, they forgot to program death animations for getting struck by the lightning machine, and once you get the final infernal machine part, a portable battery that charges terminals, you get to a tomb where... I... I have no words for what follows. I have never in my life seen a Nintendo 64 game run anywhere near this badly. Not from Titus's whole catalog, not from being hacked with the game shark. Just how? How does this happen? How does such a major respected and beloved developer and publisher like LucasArts allow this to happen? And this is with the expansion pack improving performance. What happens if you get here without the expansion pack? Does the cartridge just catch fire? Oh, and then you fight Ancient Gear Golem by getting it to step on electrified floors. It's really easy. So after fumbling around tombs for 17,000 hours, the game finally decides that it would like to have a plot of some description. It turns out the Russians don't actually want to use the Infernal Machine because Vladnikov thinks that turning it on would release a pissed off god Marduk to take over the world and he just wanted to keep the parts from being used. The actual villain of the game is Turner, a CIA guy who's been manipulating Indians to collecting the parts so that the United States can use the machine to... Well, it's pretty clear that he just wants to take over the world. Turner incidentally shows up a grand total of once for like one minute at the very start of the game in level two and has not been seen or mentioned since, so suddenly making him the main villain is... Great writing. So Indy returns to the Infernal Machine needing to save Sophia from an energy cage because she has psychic powers that Turner wants to abuse to communicate with extraplanar beings, and you run around this eternal engine-looking place arranging the components of the Infernal Machine, defying gravity, fighting an invisible guy and ancient lightning robots, and coming across an Ultron head that talks to you that you must return to his body so it can operate a machine of alien tech. Who dares disturb my slumber? Uh, that's me, I guess. Indiana Jones. And when it's all done, Indy and Sophia are sent to an alternate dimension where they have to stop a malevolent alien god from dominating the world. It's just funny to think all this insane stuff was happening in Indiana Jones books and video games about a decade before mere aliens were decried as too stupid for the franchise. <laughs> The final level is the Ethereum, this trippy spirit world full of alien tech where you swim through tunnels of light finding portals to the real world where you grab items to fight Marduk, some evil pissed off god that we don't know a single thing about. It's kind of easy to get lost since so many things look alike at first glance, but it's not too hard a level to figure out, apart from, again, a critical switch being hidden off screen because seriously what the hell? 
Eventually, Marduk absorbs Sophia to rank up, so Indy fights him by supercharging his whip with an alien lightning machine. This is nuts and freaking awesome! And given that Indy keeps finding alien D&D dice to bring back to Earth as treasures, I have questions about what happens immediately after this game. So you kill the bad guy, save the girl, escape a collapsing tomb, which you'd think would call for some music, but like most of the game, it plays out in silence. Vladnikov comes by just wanting to know what was on the other side of the portal, and they all ride off into the sunset to split some vodka. And then the game taunts you with the end credits having a cheat code for a harder difficulty that can eat shit. If you gather most of the game's treasure, or if you use a cheat code that unlocks all the levels, you can play a bonus level where Indy revisits the ruins from the opening of Raiders of the Lost Ark. The level isn't anything to write home about, just humorous the way it retcons that Belloc got away with a fake idol because the real temple was hidden behind the rock trap and Indy calls Do over and gets the real one. To kill two birds with one stone, I tried the bonus level without the expansion pack to get a demo of how the game works without it, past all the textures and font being butt fugly blurry. I didn't get the game to crash as advertised, but holy crap was that the only thing that went right! The platforming was glitchier, with Indy grabbing ledges, refusing to climb up and then just phasing through them. The whip was glitchier, with it outright refusing to latch onto points it worked fine on the first three times. The items were glitchier, with important stuff just disappearing from my inventory. The sound and graphics were glitchier, with the screen just flickering black at points. The crawling was glitchier, with the camera spazzing out each time I touched a wall. Critical progression blocks were glitchier, with the big boulder for the final trap just vanishing into thin air so the exit would open, even the fundamental laws of physics were glitchier, with Indy climbing areas he wasn't supposed to be able to climb and getting stuck. Like, I hated this game when I was playing it properly. If I didn't have the expansion pack, this game would be digital waterboarding. What's this? Another password opens up a picture of the dev team? Yeah. Fuck all of you! Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine may well have been a technical marvel for its time, and I can't speak to the original PC version, but the Nintendo 64 port was torture. Between rampant glitches, a fundamental platforming system that barely works, and levels designed by an asshole. And while I only got a taste of the game's base performance if you don't have an expansion pack, that taste was of a game that barely runs in the first place. I hate this freaking game, and I never, ever want to play it again. But copies of it are apparently super rare with the few listings on eBay going over 100 bucks a piece, so I guess I'll hold on to it. It belongs in a museum. My museum. Where it'll be looked over by... Top men.